Hello, and thank you for joining us. Today's webinar is Introducing Green Chemistry Analytical Techniques Applicable to the Teledyne Lehman Labs Quick Trace M7600 CVAA System. Our presenter today is Jeff Forsberg, Product Technical Line Manager for Teledyne Lehman Labs. Okay, Jeff, turning it over to you. Hi, everybody. I'd like to, again, thank you for joining today's uh, webinar. I did review the attendee list, and I saw a fair number of people that were the names I recognize. So, again, thank you to everybody for joining today's webinar. So, today we're going to talk about the M7600 and reducing liquid flows and waste flows on that system, uh, more in line with uh, uh, the green requirements for reducing uh, waste generation and things like that within uh, the laboratories in today's laboratories. A little bit about um, our beginnings. So in 1991, uh, Lehman Labs introduced uh, PS200, which was one of the very first uh, standalone mercury analyzers on the market. In 1995, uh, CTAC Technologies introduced uh, M6000A, which was a uh, competitive system for standalone mercury analysis. And then throughout the years, We've been introducing a number of systems uh, to help with your daily activity and uh, mercury analysis. In 2004, Teledyne Lehman Labs was acquired by, um, I'm sorry, Teledyne acquired Lehman Labs in 2004. 2007, we introduced uh, uh, Hydro 2C, which is a combustion system and then uh, various other systems throughout those years. And in 2013, Teledyne acquired uh, CTAC uh, Technologies, and since then the product group has been merged and, uh, to what we have today. In 2017, uh, the C CTAC uh, systems were introduced with uh, 560 and 280 auto samplers. Some of the highlights for the uh, Teledyne Lehman Labs Mercury Analyzers, again, we have four models, the CVAA systems, the Hydro 2AA, the M7600, uh, the M8000, which is atomic fluorescence and atomic uh, fluorescence with gold, and then the Hydro 2C, which is a combustion system. We have a, a patented gas liquid separator for the quick trace systems, which uh, the patent expired in 2016. Uh, the quick trace systems have a four channel, 12 roller pump. Uh, all systems have superior dynamic range. The software on the quick trace is extremely flexible and the Envoy and the quick trace have over range protection. Uh, we have gold trap, uh, reagent saving costs in the M8000, the CVAF system. Auto sampler configurations for the uh, two uh, quick trace models. And then the Hydra products are modular, which is a, a nice feature. And then 25 plus years of brand recognition. So the 7600 is uh, our most uh, versatile uh, CVAA system. Detection limits at less than 0.5 nanograms per liter, uh, and that's in the most sensitive mode of operation. And with that system, we do have the capabilities of achieving uh, the method detection limits for US EPA 245.7. The method detection limit is, as I recall, it's 1.8 nanogram per liter, but I have to warn everybody that um, we, we need to run this with caution uh, with the BRCL, the bromine monochloride, which is the uh, solution for oxidizing the samples. Uh, it will form uh, bromoform. It has a possibility of forming bromoform with certain samples, and that organic uh, compound will absorb at our wavelength at 253.652. But with that said, the system can uh, hit uh, achievable uh, method detection limits and reporting criteria for that method in less than 90 seconds, um, and that's achieving a less than one nanogram per liter MDL with the method. Typical range for the system as received is 0 0.5 nanograms per liter to greater than 500 micrograms per liter. And that's our release specifications. And this is with no hardware changes. So the Quick Trace M7600 is a double beam system. So we have uh, double beam optics, lamp stabilization, 
So that is a thermally stabilized lamp compartment, uh, optical uh, feedback for the um, uh, electrical optical feedback for the, the lamp control. And what will, this will do is as the lamp ages, it senses the radiation coming off the lamp. It bumps the power up. So during the lifetime of the lamp, our IDL or MDL doesn't change. It's a very nice feature. So when the customer is using their M7600, day in and day out, they're going to achieve the, the, the same response for the same standard. Uh, the computer controlled um, gas flow. It's a mass flow controller. The system is designed and optimized for argon, but it'll also work for nitrogen uh, greater than a uh, liter per minute uh, argon flow. But since it's optimized for argon, the nitrogen will not quite achieve a liter per minute. It's more in the range of 750 milliliters per minute. Gas liquid separation. So I mentioned earlier about the um, patent on the uh, GLS or the gas liquid separator, which expired in 2016. So this is a center post design, and that's a large reaction surface area to our liquid volume. So when it's running, it looks like it is running basically empty. You're going to see a small amount of liquid at the drain port, and that's about it. So what this system will do for the customer is increased efficiency. That'll increase your throughput. It gives you a stable uh, liquid film, liquid flow, and that in turn is reproducible signals and precise results. So when you take the reproducible signals and precise results, then that affords the customer that alter trace uh, method detection limit. So it all starts with the gas liquid separator and our mass flow controller, our double beam optics, and then the four channel uh, 12 roller pump. So the theory of operation. Uh, so the samples all have to be acidified, so everything has to be digested, so the mercury's in HG2+, and then the sample and is delivered by the auto sampler to the gas liquid separator. So on route to the gas liquid separator, our reducing agent, which is 10% stannous and 7% uh, HCl, that already reduces reduces the, the uh, acidified mercury in the sample to HG0. From there, we introduce our gas flow. So our gas flow is flowing through the dual beam optics. So it flows from left to right, flows up and around, and then comes in and goes into the bottom of the gas liquid separator. The elemental mercury at this point is already reduced, so it's easily stripped off. And from there, it flows into the Nafion dryer, where the water is removed, and it's off-gassed into the laboratory. It's just water vapor. And the uh, carrier gas, which is argon, and it's laden with mercury, that leaves the dryer, and it goes up into... Uh, the sample cell. And in the sample cell, the gas flow moves from right to left, so it's counter from the direction of the carrier gas, and this is uh, going to measure the absorbance at 253.652. Uh, the detector is a CCD, so we have two beams and collimating light through the uh, sapphire windows and then off to the detector where the light is filtered and the absorbance, absorption is measured. The M7600 has very broad linear ranges, greater than four orders of magnitude. So our typical dynamic range for the system is 0 0.5 nanograms per liter to greater than 500 micrograms per liter, or PPB. So here's an example of the orders of magnitude of linearity. So we're achieving three nines and an eight nine, and here's the values from this curve. So we went from a one nanogram per liter, one PPT, up to a 10,000. So here's the first order at 10 PPT, 100 PPT, 1,000, or 1,000, and then a 10,000 PPT, or a 10 PPB. And you can see the response. This response is very linear, uh, greater than three nines. So now that all of this has been discussed, um, how the system, the basic uh, theory of the system, what affects this dynamic range? How can we get such a, a broad dynamic range with this system? So it's gas flow. 
gas flow, pump rate, and time in sample. So if we adjust the gas flow, high flows will equal a short residence time, and that gives us speedy results, but it decreases sensitivity. So again, decrease sensitivity, we expand that dynamic range. Low gas flows are long residence times within the optical bench, optical cells, and that will uh, increase the sample times, but it increases the sensitivity. So if it increases the sensitivity, we are decreasing our IDL and our MDL. Pump rate, same thing. It'll increase or decrease time to the GLS, and that changes the mercury load uh, within the system that is uh, taking the, the HG0 and sending it off to the optical system for measurement. So that changes our flow. So gas flow and pump rate, and now time in sample is the third leg of the stool. So time in sample to adjust a steady state for a flat a signal on the plateau for peak height. We can also use peak area. So if you want to just measure everything under the curve, your uh, peak signal will be similar to like a, a liquid chromatography peak and and such, and it will be everything under the curve. You can go really, really fast. We can typically run samples at less than 60 seconds and more in a range of about 50 to uh, 45 seconds. So you adjust all three of these settings to achieve your desired results. So again, three steps, change the gas flow, change the pump rate, and change the time in sample. So what are the advantages of this 12 uh, uh, roller four channel pump? So the original tubing harness gives you ultra trace method detection limits. The sample's not consumed. So you can go back and, and check out the responses from samples that may be in question. So you can allow repeats and validation checks. You can also dial in the flows for high concentration or ultra trace analysis. It gives us wide dynamic ranges and the li liquid uptake is from greater than one milliliter at five second sample to a max rate of 15 milliliters per minute. And that's at 60 uh, seconds uh, uh, of uptake time. So if you haven't guessed already, the max rate uh, at 100 RPMs is 15 mils per minute with the current uh, pump tubing that we're using. So the original pump tubing, parallel channels are for the drain. So channel one and two, are using uh, yellow yellow. The ID is 1.42 millimeters and the part number is SP5705A. For channel three, which is this one right here, that's still yellow yellow, same uh, ID at 1.40, 1.42, so same part number. And channel three, which is black black, that's our reducing uh, pump tubing and that is 0.76 millimeter for the ID and the part number is SP5705. So why do we have four channels and three are the same? Um, so we're pulling sample in and then pulling reagent in and we wanna do ensure that that GLS runs empty so we exceed the input of the volume uh, with the output going to the drain. So we make sure that the system is empty at all times. So the alternate pump tubing, this is now where we get into the green chemistry, the introduction uh, alluded to uh, uh, green analytical. Um, so the advantages now are still, we have ultra trace detect detection limit, uh, still the sample's not consumed, and you can do the validation and uh, checks of existing samples already previously ran. Uh, you can dial in your uh, flow concentrations for ultra trace analysis, that's still in play. But we have a wider dynamic range, and that's simply because we're using less sample. Less sample is part of the three-legged stool. We're, we're gonna be changing uh, the process slightly, and we're gonna increase the uh, concentration by reducing the uh, sensitivity of the system. Liquid uptake is 0.5 milliliters and five seconds is our minimum. And now our max flow rate is approximately 10 mils per minute, 60 seconds at 100% pump rate. The alternate uh, tubing harness, uh, channel one and two, the part number is 15-43. Uh, 
0.08-102, and our ID of that sample tubing and waste tubing is 1.02 millimeter. Channel 4, which is the reducing, is part number 15-4309-102, and the ID is 0.51 millimeter. This is an extremely small ID tubing, so in order to um, have it um, compatible with some of the fittings and barb fittings that we use on the system, we had to have it flared. So this tubing is a small ID, but it's flared, so it holds its flare and it allows the customer to attach it to the T's and, and uh, capillaries and so forth. So the alternate um, pump tubing at 100% rate, as I mentioned earlier, we're now at 10 milliliters per minute. That is 67% of the flow from the standard tubing. So 33% savings right off the bat. The uh, reagent went from 0.57 milliliters down to 2.7. So that is 47% of the standard tubing. So it's a 53% savings on flows. So our combined flows with the new tubing harness uh, is 40% on uh, combined flows for waste. So that's including the stannous chloride and the sample. So the waste generated is approximately 40% less. At 100% pump rate, uh, that gives us a reduction in stannous chloride because we're 53% less, about 47% of the standard flow for the uh, reducing agent. That's 180 milliliters per hour. So if we look up some of the standard pricing for uh, stannous chloride uh, dihydrate, a uh, 500 gram bottle could be anywhere from 400 to 600 dollars per bottle MSRP without your discount. So let's just assume 500 dollars a bottle, so 10% stannous in a liter of solution during an eight hour day, that's gonna save us 150 US dollars because we're actually saving uh, 1.4 liters. And if we multiply uh, per day by five days a year, 52 uh, weeks in a year, that's going to give us an overall savings of 39,000 US dollars in stannous chloride alone by going to this green, uh, green chemistry with the alternate uh, tubing. So at 100% pump rate, also that gives us 470 milliliters of waste reduction per hour, which is also uh, costly to dispose of waste. Reduced flows uh, does result in a very slightly uh, uh, increase, a very slight increase in instrument detection limit. We are now at less than one nanogram per liter, so that's up from 0 0.5 nanogram per, per liter, so not a lot, but a slight due to the uh, decrease in sensitivity. But that decrease in sensitivity does allow for a larger dynamic range of the system. So the flows are very linear. So with the new tubing harness, we tried all different pump rates and, and different uh, uh, scenarios, and we tested for, for many months of the system, and they pretty much average out to the same. So the reduction in uh, sample uptake is about 33% and the reduction in reagent is about 53%. So here's at 80% uh, pump rate and uh, sample is 12 down to 8 and the reagent is about 4.5 milliliters per minute down to 2.2 milliliters per minute. So again, 53% um, percent reduction. That's where the big savings is going to be in the stannous chloride um, of this system. So here's an example of liquid flows for waste uh, at 50% and 80%. So 40% reduction. So we're at 10 mils per minute um, liquid flow waste down to 6 so or 6.4. So approximately 40% reduction. And here is 50% for the stannous at 2.85 and 1.35. So again, about 53% reduction in stannous chloride flow or 47% of the original flow. Same thing in 80%, we're 16 and a half down to 10 and then 4.6 down to 2.1, uh, 2.2 for, uh, for the reagent flow. 
method development. So you're going to obviously have to do some method development with the new tubing, but method development is, is relatively easy. So we have our method editor uh, on the favorites bar. So in there we have file, tools, conditions. Conditions is where you're going to spend most of your time. So this is controls for the auto sampler and the uh, analyzer, uh, method timings and settings. So uptake, baseline corrections, uh, peak reads, and so forth. Uh, we also have our standards and our QC tests are all lumped into the uh, method editor. So in method editor, um, under calibration, uh, under standards, that's where you enter your uh, calibration param parameters. You can pause pending, and the system will also even email you uh, once uh, the analysis for the, uh, I am sorry, once the analysis for the um, calibration is, is finished. So in, in the, the method editor, you can do things like fill down for your um, standards. You can uh, enter in your peak height, your quantitation type. So it's a peak area, peak height, and then your quantitation type is your methodology and so forth. Um, and it's, it's, it's really easy to uh, fill these down. Real-time method editor, uh, you can do things like uh, enter in your uh, quantitation for your systems. So uh, units of measure, weights of measure, and units of volume. So we allow for these things to change within this method editor. And this is set up for uh, laboratories that may be using different uh, units of measure, so like a biological lab, a, a pharmaceutical lab, a university, and so forth. So in biological laboratories, it may be uh, units of measure, maybe milligrams per uh, deciliter or millimoles, millimoles per deciliter, and so forth. So you can create your own methodology um, and your own reporting criteria and put it into the system. So it's very, very flexible, and you can also change your standard names and so forth in this method editor. So in method editor, we also have um, under conditions, now this is where you're going to enter in your timing for the system. So in your timing for the system, you have auto sampler, so it's time and sample, and rinse time. And then under analyzer, you're going to have your timing for that system as well, which is your pump speed, your gas flow, read delays, uh, time and sample replicates, and your baseline correction points. So this is all done in real time. Uh, when you're doing your method development above the graph, we have the uh, favorites bar for this, and this is toggle your grid lines, copy uh, chart to clipboard, print, unzoom, uh, peak profile, so that's a single sample read, stop, start, and copy your profile to the worksheet log. So basically, you load your sample up, you go to a single sample, and it reads it, and this is in real time. So in real time, we can take and adjust the um, integration points and the baseline points to make changes for uh, the, the method uh, development, and you can add them in here under method editor, under analyzer. So you can do things like you can grab the read delays with your mouse, move them from left to, left to right, or you can just simply um, bring them over here and you can type them in or you can toggle them up and down. So when that happens, you can take and see how the method is working for you um, based on your relative standard deviation for the peak height of that sample. So once it's all done, so here's how it works. So you have pump speed, gas flow, sample uptake, rinse time, integration time, baseline correction points. So you peak profile. So you want to use your highest concentrated standard to do the peak profile because everything will fall in line underneath that. And then you adjust all your timings for that stable signal um, on your peak height. So you very simply run it and you can look at your graph and then you can adjust your 
baseline correction points and your peak integration for your uh, lowest uh, uh, percent uh, RSD of that peak height. And this is all done real time. It takes maybe a minute to two minutes to develop that profile, and then you're ready to go with your calibration. So for the pump tubing, the reduced uh, ID pump tubing, we've set up a couple of uh, basic methods to start. Uh, so this one is 0 to 100 nanograms per liter, and the range for this is less than 0.5 nanograms per liter up to about 100. Gas flow is 40. Pump rate is 100%. Our pump, our sample flow is about 10 mils per minute. And our rinse for our auto sampler is variable up to 100%. So we need to have a positive rinse flow. So if you have positive rinse flow, you're uh, flushing the system better. You're not pulling air into the system. You're going to get more stable results. Uh, sample uptake for this was 60 seconds and our rinse time was 100, 100 seconds. So our total analysis time is approximately 160 seconds. Our read delay was at 74 seconds. So the read delay is right here. This is where it's gonna take the information for the peak height. We're doing four replicates, um, two baseline correction point for this. And our response is about 4,000 microabsorbance units uh, for a 100 PPT. So that gives us a slope of 40 microabsorbance units, and the slope is for each PPT. Total analysis time was about uh, 2 minutes and 67 seconds. Here is 0 to uh, 20 ppb microgram per liter. This is a typical range where most most laboratories will be operating in. Uh, most of your methodologies that uh, environmental labs and so forth will be uh, running is in PPB range, maybe 0 to 5, 0 to 10, or maybe even 0 to 20 microgram per liter. So this one is set up for 0.1 to 20. Uh, gas flow is 100 mils per minute now instead of 40. Pump rate went to 50% instead of 100. So as I mentioned earlier, it's very linear with these um, flows with the new tubing. So now we're at about five mils per minute sample uptake. Uh, rinse time uh, up to uh, about 60% uh, variable. That's gonna give you your positive rinse. So you're not pulling solution out of the rinse station fast, faster than it's supplying. Um, Sample uptake time is 55 seconds and rinse is 110 seconds. Obviously, we have higher concentration, so we want to make sure it's rinsed out to baseline. Read delay 77 seconds. Uh, replicate time is two seconds. Our response is 135,000 units for a 10 ppb, so that's given us a slope of about 13,500. And with that, our nominal detection limit of this method is going to be less than. 0.01 microgram per liter or uh, less than 10 ppt. Uh, sample time is about 275 seconds. Now, one thing with the single baseline correction point, you can run much faster. So if you know, notice here, let me zoom in and I'll, I'll give you a quick preview of this. So in here, if we zoom in, we look at the baseline. So the peak starts at an inflection point of about 50 seconds. So we have all of this extra time up front. So we could take that out of the rinse and have it coming down to baseline here as long as it's at baseline before the integration point. So instead of having a uh, rinse time of 110 seconds, that rinse time could be 80. So we could take 30 seconds of analysis time just by using utilizing the front end coming down to baseline before that baseline correction point. So there's lots of ways to increase the efficiency of the system. So typical um, uh, performance with the new tubing is 0 to 100. The trace range, gas flow is 40 mils per minute. Our IDL is less than 0.8 nanograms per liter. Uh, they were coming in around uh, 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. So it's definitely less than 0. Um, or less than one nanogram per liter. Short-term precision at N equals five at a five PPT is less than 3%. 20 uh, PPT at N equals five is less than 2%. The response is 40 microabsorbance units per liter, nanograms per liter, and the PPB range, our IDL is less than uh, 10 PPT, 0 0.01 
uh, PPB, gas flow is 100, and the uh, precision uh, N equals 40 is less than 2.5 percent at a uh, 200 PPT or 0.2 PPB. And again, the response, our slope is about 13,500 units per PPB. So to validate the tubing, uh, we used two different methods. Um, one was US EPA 7471, which is from your solid uh, waste manual 846. It is for soil sediments, bottom deposit, and sludge type materials. Our calibration was uh, 0.2, 1, 2, 5, and 10 ppb. Um, the samples were approximately 2 grams and 50 milliliters, and this is done by block digestion. Uh, for the other half of the sample um, base, we used uh, US FDA EAM 4.5, which is the elemental al analysis manual, and this is microwave assisted digest. These were some of our food samples, and we the calibration was 50, 100, 250, 500, and 1,000 nanograms per liter. And the sample is approximately 0.5 grams in 50 milliliters, and again, it's microwave digestion. So the two methods, uh, the 7471, here's the system parameter. So our uptake is at 35. Uh, mills per minute, and the gas flow is 100, rinse time is 80, pump speed is at 50, and here's our integration. So remember, it's very, very linear, so um, pump rate at 50%, so now that's going to be, instead of 10 mils per minute, it's approximately 5 mils, and with our timing, we're about 3 mils per liter of sample uptake, and our stannous is uh, approximately 0.8 milliliters at uh, 1.35 for the full rate, and total waste now is less than four. For the FDA method, we are at uh, 30 seconds of uptake, but 80% uh, uh, pump speed. So that gives us approximately four mils per minute and 1.1 of the stannous, so less than five mils uh, per sample, total sample load of waste. The samples that we use for validation, laboratory control sample, a laboratory control controlled duplicate. We analyzed some over-the-counter uh, salmon, uh, duped it, and also over-the-counter crab. And for tuna, oyster, and mussel, we had CRMs, SRM type material. For the EPA method for the sediments and solid waste, uh, we had fly ash, uh, Tennessee River sediment, industrial sludge, and coal. The Tennessee River sediment was relatively high at 50 uh, ppm, so we diluted that by 50 prior to analysis on the system. CRM recoveries were very, very nice across the board. Two different methods, two different digest digestion techniques. The lowest response uh, percent recovery was 92.6. So here's an, um, the concentrations, just for reference, um, of those samples. So both the US FDA and the US EPA methods perform very nicely as expected with the new tubing. And one of the reasons for this is we did not change the ratios of sample to uh, reagent usage. Uh, the ratios are almost identical, so that didn't change the kinetics of the pump rates and the gas, um, the reduction of the stannous um, for the mercury from uh, HG2 plus to HG0 uh, within the gas liquid separator. Spike recoveries for the uh, food samples were really, really nice. So the salmon and the FTA, uh, lowest one was 86.4. Um, so the salmon, the raw was a result of 0 0.0113 ppm milligrams per kilogram. If we assume 100% conversion to methyl mercury, that is 0. Uh, 0,121 milligrams per kilogram methyl mercury for the crab that came out to 0 0.0084 milligrams per kilogram methyl mercury. So based on the World Health Organization, they say 1.6 uh, microgram per kilogram per body weight is what they allowed per week consumption of methyl mercury. So this turns out to be 0 0.0016 milligram per kilogram ppm. 
So that would mean that an average male in the in the world is 87 80.7 kilograms. They can consume less than 0 0.129 milligram per kilogram of mercury, methylmercury tainted food and still be relatively okay based on the World Health Organization. Uh, average female is 76.4 kilograms, so they can assume 0 0.1222 milligram per kilogram. So if you look up here, you could eat the whole entire uh, kilogram of uh, salmon and or crab and still be okay. It's a lot of, a lot of food, but uh, in, based on that organization, you could you would be fine. The US EPA, they have a little tighter regulation. There's a 0 0.0001 milligram per kilogram body weight per day. So if you take that by seven, we're, we're still slightly uh, less than the 1.6 milligram per kilogram per week. Combined results. So the CRM and SRM spike recoveries were very nice. This is an aggregate, uh, just a uh, top level view left to right of all the performance of the system, percent recoveries. So everything is above the 80 percent. Uh, lowest uh, spike recovery was 86.4, but and then all of the recoveries for the uh, SRMs were well within the range. We like to see the up and down below 100%, which tells us that the system is performing as expected. So if you have everything uh, above above the nominal range of 100% or everything below the range of 100%, I would the I would tend to look for some type of analytical problem or a uh, uh, determinant error within the system. Summary of the pump tubing. So the flows for the standard ID, 15 mils per minute. So we went from 15 milliliters per minute down to 10. Uh, Stannous chloride went from 5.7 down to 2.7. Total waste at 100% rate went from almost 21 milliliters per minute down to uh, 14 milliliters per minute. And the variable rate for the uptake, uh, the lowest we picked up before at five seconds is 1.25 milliliters. Now we're down at 0.8. Detection limit did change slightly, again, from less than 0.5 to less than one. And typically, with the standard tubing, instrument detection limit on the system is around 0.2 to 0.3 nanograms per liter. I say less than one here, but we were like 0.6 to 0.7. So it is basically double of what the other one was, but we're changing the the rate, but we're still less than one nanogram per liter, which is much better than a lot of the other systems on the market. Usable range, we did increase slightly up to uh, 700 ppb up from 500, so an increase of approximately 200 ppb. And then the performance specifications, they really didn't change all that much. So three to three, two to one, 2.5 to two, that's relatively the same. The only thing that did change was at um, throughput at 0.5 nanograms per liter. We can't achieve that now with the new tubing, um, but the old one was 90 seconds. And again, you have to look up here, the change from less than one nanogram to less than five nanograms, so an increase of instrument detection limit is not that large of an in increase. The slope changed slightly uh, from 40 to 60 and 13,000 down from 17,000. This is the four uh, products uh, that I mentioned earlier. So we have the CVAA system, the Hydra 2, which is a modular de design, uh, AA. Here's the 7600. It's uh, pictured here with the two rack auto sampler. The M8000, which is our cold vapor atomic system, uh, three modes of operation, single gold, double gold, or just straight atomic fluorescence. And then here is our combustion system, our Hydra 2C, which is the CAA, uh, combustion atomic absorption. Basically, any sample you want to put in a boat, liquid, solid, semi-solid, uh, volatile, organic, uh, you put that in the boat, and it will give you the concentration of mercury in that sa sample without digestion. It is a really nice system. 
So with that, we're going to have you uh, uh, submit questions to my email address. Uh, jeff.forsberg at teledyne.com. And I'd also like to thank Mary Jo Wright. I want to give analytical acknowledgments to Mary Jo uh, Wright. She is the application chemist that helped uh, gather all the data on the SRMs and perform uh, all of the testing for the smaller ID tubing. So again, I want to thank you for attending today's webinar. And if you have questions, please submit them to jeff.forsberg at teledyne.com. And thank you and have a great day.